Cancer can affect many parts of the body, including the eyes. In this episode of OcuTalk, ophthalmologist Nathan Scott explains ocular oncology, the types of tumors that develop in the eyes, the lack of warning symptoms, the diagnostic process, and the treatment options available. Hello and welcome to OcuTalk. Today we're going to be having a conversation with ophthalmologist Nathan Scott. Hello, doctor. Hello, how are you? Good, thank you. Uh, to get us started, will you tell us a little bit about your background and your specialty? Absolutely. So my name is Nathan Scott, like you said, and I am an assistant professor of ophthalmology at uh, the University of California, San Diego. I specialize in both the retina and ocular oncology. And what that means is I take care of patients with conditions ranging from retinal detachments and diabetic eye disease or age-related macular degeneration to intraocular cancers like uveal melanoma and retinoblastoma. I also conduct research focused on improving early detection and treatment of eye tumors, um, as well as some work with reducing waste in ophthalmic surgery. Well, that sounds pretty perfect because today we were hoping you could talk to us about the retina and ocular oncology. <laughs> so to get us started, um, can you explain to us what the retina is, what the primary functions are? Absolutely. So one way to think about the retina is that it's a thin layer of tissue lining the back wall of the eye. It acts like the film in a camera converting light into an electric signal that's then sent to the brain through the optic nerve. And that's how we're able to see light, color, and any details. It's essential for vision and any kind of damage to the retina can cause serious visual impairment. So what are some typical issues that people may have with the retina? So some of the more common issues that I see in my clinic are retinal detachments. This is when the retina pulls away from the back wall of the eye or diabetic retinopathy. This is when di uh, diabetes uh, can cause damage to the blood vessels within the retina. Macular degeneration is when little deposits can affect the central part of the vision, as well as retinal vascular occlusions. And you can think of this like almost like a stroke in the eye. And these all can cause different various sort of symptoms like blurred vision, floaters, or even just parts of the vision, a vision can be lost. So then what is ocular oncology? How does that fit in? Ocular oncology is a branch of medicine branch of ophthalmology focused on tumors in and around the eye. It includes cancers of the uveal tract. The uvea is made up of the iris, the ciliary body, and the choroid. These are all just different parts of the eye. But then you can also have cancers in pretty much any other aspect of the eye, like the optic nerve, the eyelids, inside the orbit, or even the retina. So what are the most common types of cancers in the eye? Like what structures are most commonly affected then? Tumors can really arise from virtually any part of the eye. The most common is the uvea. So that would be the iris, the ciliary body, or the choroid. The choroid is the most common part of the uvea that's affected by cancer in adults. In children, the retina is the most commonly affected area for tumors to develop. This is retinoblastoma. So why do the tumors develop differently in children versus adults? It's not really known exactly why these tumors develop differently. Um, it has a lot to do with the different types of mutations that are susceptible in children versus adults. And we think that this is probably what differentiates the two. So what signs and symptoms can your patients look for to maybe guide them in the direction of coming to see a doctor, like maybe I have a tumor, what would, what would that look like? Well, the most important thing is that the most common sign or symptom of an intraocular tumor is actually no symptoms at all. Most commonly, they're found on routine exam when people are going to get their eyes checked or going to get new glasses. But some of the symptoms can include vision loss or blurred vision, flashes, like little flashes in the periphery of your vision, little floaters. Um, in children, the, a white reflex in the child's pupil, either by a camera uh, being noticed in photos or just when they're looking around, are also different signs that you can expect for when tumors are developing in the eye. So is that um, a symptom of a retinoblastoma then? A white reflex is a common uh, symptom of retinoblastoma, that's correct. 
Okay. So what does the diagnostic process look like? Well, pretty much every uh, diagnosis requires a thorough dilated exam. So if a tumor is suspect suspected or we see a tumor on that dilated exam, we'll oftentimes use an ultrasound to get an idea of what the internal structures of the tumor look like. An OCT can really distinguish the retinal features. Um, we'll oftentimes take a, a fundus uh, a photograph in order to, to determine whether or not the tumor is changing over time. And then we can also do something called fluorescein angiography, which is when we place a dye into the vessels and we watch them fill the retina and the tumor and choroid around the retina. What kind of treatment options are most common for ocular tumors? So it all depends on what type of tumor you're dealing with. If you have a tumor on the surface of the eye, oftentimes this can either be surgically excised, so just surgically removed. These can also be treated with chemotherapy eye drops. If you have a tumor on the inside of the eye, if it's an adult and it's uveal melanoma, the mainstay of treatment is radiotherapy. This can be through plaque brachytherapy, where you use a small disc the size of a quarter with tiny radioactive seeds. We suture that to the side of the eye in the location of the tumor. That stays there for anywhere from three to seven days, and we remove it, and that can treat the tumor. And then in retinoblastoma, we oftentimes either treat the entire body with a chemotherapy. We can inject a chemotherapy into the eye, or there's something new called intraarterial chemotherapy, where they use a small device to basically target the chemotherapy only towards the eye. So how is the course of treatment determined? How do you best decide what treatment is best suited for a given patient? So that all typically depends on what type of tumor you're dealing with and the size and location of the tumor. What kind of success rates can patients expect when going through this type of treatment? So it all depends on the type of tumor, but we'll say for adults with uh, uveal melanoma being the most common, it's about greater than a 96% uh, single radiotherapy success rate for these tumors, um, where you've cured the eye, um, you know, greater than 96% of the time. So what does the recovery process look like for people that have ocular tumors? People often do very well. Again, it depends on the type of tumor, but say in a patient with uveal melanoma who's undergone brachytherapy, they quite often just typically require eye drops at the end of the surgery. So what would happen if it just went untreated? Like I don't have any symptoms, I have an aversion to going to see my eye care professional and it goes untreated. What happens in cases like that? Tumors that go untreated, particularly the intraocular tumors, they will continue to grow. And if they grow too large, they can cause the vision to continue to decline. You can become completely blind. And probably the one of the most devastating uh, outcomes is a lot of pain. So sometimes the tumors can co grow so large that they cause pain. And oftentimes that's when we end up ultimately having to remove the eye. What would be your best advice for patients when it comes to staying on top of conditions that might affect their retina, including different types of ocular tumors? I think the most, th most important thing is to get dilated exams yearly. Um, if a provider tells you that you have a suspicious, anything suspicious on your exam or something that looks like it could be a problem later, just staying on top of it being cognizant of any new symptoms like flashes or floaters and getting your annual exam can prevent, you know, these lesions from growing larger and causing more problems than they need to. Well, doctor, is there anything else you would like to tell our audience today? Yes, your eyes can tell you a lot about your health. So don't ignore changes in your vision or your appearance, especially in children, um, and get regular eye exams, even if your vision seems fine. Well, thank you very much, doctor. It's been a pleasure speaking with you today. Thanks so much.